big night last night? No. This is a brain teaser. What can you do with these items? You mean besides cure a hangover? Yeah. I don't know. I'll bite. What can you do? You can break out of jail. No! Yeah. The myth is that an industrious inmate lined the inside of his cell wall with sheet plastic and he had collected something like 10 years worth of antacid tablets, which he exposed to water, creating enough CO2 to pressurize the cell and break the cell walls, and he escaped. I love it. What's not to love? For instant freedom, just add water. But can the massive amount of CO2 produced from a pile of bubbling tablets really budge bricks and mortar? We'll need to capture every ounce of energy from a giant chemical belch. Well, I reckon the best place to start is to figure out what kind of pressures we can get out of antacid tablets here in the shop. I think you're right. Maybe we should start out in small scale and see what we're dealing with, with the pressures, the physics, the chemistry, that kind of thing. Yeah, we're definitely going to need all of that information before we go full scale. Before anyone breaks out the beakers, they'll need to start building a full-scale cell, which should be as tough as its tenant. While normally people go to great lengths to avoid a prison cell, we've actually had to go to great lengths to get up close and cozy with one. These pallets of cinder blocks that I'm sitting on will in fact our prison walls make, and that yellow line behind me describes the extent of our test cell. Construction begins inside building 258 at the naval shipyard. This way they can't be stalled by bad weather. You can tell they're serious by the forest of rebar they use to anchor the jail to the floor. If you know us, you know we like to build everything ourselves, and we've built buildings before on the show, but in this case, since this story is all about the structural integrity of the building, we figured that we need some professional help, so that's why we've got these guys doing this. This building's going to be tough. In fact, it's far and away the sturdiest shack we've ever built. It's a cozy 10 feet long by 7 feet wide by 6 and a half feet high maximum security cell. It's got a lot better technique than I do. That's pretty clear. They're all like throwing it and stuff. I'm kind of impressed. It is pretty to watch. And hey, these guys are fast. This professional help thing is pretty good. This morning we had a yellow rectangle on the floor. This afternoon, most of a prison cell. But the day's only half done for Adam and Jamie. It's back to M5 to find out how much potentially explosive pressure they can hope to wrangle from the humble antacid tablet. Jamie starts with a volumetric test to see how much gas is produced by measuring the water it displaces. So you release the antacid into here. It expands. That expansion of gas pushes water out of this one into here, and whatever volume we get in here is how much gas was produced by the antacid. Ain't it great? I love it. Let's do it. There's more than enough water to make this work. Jamie pulls the quick-release magnet, and they're off and bubbling. Look at that. It works. And they've got a result in seconds. So it looks like one pill produces about 75 milliliters of gas. Yeah. About 80. Well, now my question would be, do two pills displace 160 milliliters? Does it scale perfectly linearly? Double the gas from double the pills would make sense, but science is rarely so simple. Wow. The volume of gas produced scoots past the 160 mark and continues to climb. This one's looking like 275. To see if the trend continues, the next logical step is to try four pills. Double the two pill result would be 550 mils of displaced water. And before long, Jamie's wishing he'd brought a bigger beaker. It's actually going more than... More than double. It seems like doubling the number of pills gives you more than double the displacement of uh, water. <laughs> 